This is the big one. Today, folks, we are going to be taking a look at my Nintendo Entertainment System collection. The NES was the retro console that I wanted the most growing up. It was the one that I obsessed over. I wanted to know all about it. I wanted to play it. I wanted to have it in my collection. I just... It was the console that sparked my interest in retro game collecting. And, or just p interest in retro gaming, period, basically. Um, it was released 10 years before I was born. And yet there was something about it that just made it all the more fascinating to me, basically. Um, I... My interest in the NES, like, first began, I, I think, around the same time I uh, first started using YouTube, and this was before my channel existed. Um, actually, yeah, it definitely was before my channel existed, because it was it was only, like, a... No, it wasn't even, like, a month. It was, like, a, just a week or, a week or so after I got my channel that I got my NES, basically. Um, but, yeah, basically, around the time I started using YouTube, I was... I, I first looked at... I, I, I must have, like, looked at YTPs first, like, the, the typical, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, spaghetti, or spaghetti din dinner, or whatever they call it, uh, <laughs> like, the, the typical classic YTPs about the Zelda and Mario CDI games, basically, and, uh, as well as, uh, Mambo Luigi and stuff like that, but, uh, basically, it was also, I also started watching a classic game room. HD and Classic Game Room HD was the was basically my first taste of a of a retro gaming. Essentially, it was the first channel where I was introduced to all these different systems I never heard of, and one of their videos was on the NES. Like there was one where they they like to compare the NES to other consoles, basically like do a kind of a mashup or a battle of sorts between consoles. Anyways, it yeah, basically the first that was the first place I learned about the NES from. Um, and there were other YouTubers as well that I interacted with early on, when, even after I started my channel and whatnot. Um, but either way, uh, building this up quite a bit, uh, but basically, a couple weeks after, well, actually, no, it was on Christmas, yeah, so it was a month after my channel started, but, uh, yeah, on Christmas Day, um, I had made it very clear to my mom that I was very interested in this old system, so she got me my NES, my very own NES. <laughs> As you can see, it has seen better days. It has experienced quite a bit, quite a bit of yellowing, and it was pretty bad when around the time I got it. But uh, it's gone even worse, like over the years. I've had this NES for eleven years now, so even even you know, even you know, ignoring the fact that the system's like thirty five years old now, it's uh, my NES alone is also pretty old, despite the fact that I'm much younger than this system. Um, but either way, I, I, I love this system a lot. It's, uh, it's very, very dear to me. Um, I know a lot of my friends aren't, don't really care for it much because it's older and it's, it's, and the graphics aren't, you know, just everything in general is not as good as the Super Nintendo, which came basically after and basically blew it right out of the water. But, uh, nevertheless, it just, despite the fact that I, I was, I'm like way behind or I came way after its generation, it's still a very, very special system to me. So, anyways, I've gone on enough about it. Um, I am planning on getting a new NES at some point. You know, one that has less yellowing, just to... Because, like, the NES is probably the easiest retro system to get a hold of. It's, it's so... Like, it's so common and cheap to find, basically, on Amazon, eBay, you name it, essentially. It's not going away anytime soon. If you're someone who's who has even a mild interest in retro games and you want to start somewhere, definitely start with the NES. Like, I mean, that's if if you don't want to get a Super Nintendo first. I mean, understandably. Uh, but anyways, uh, we'll get into... Actually, I guess I'll start with the... I wasn't sure whether to start with the games or the accessories, because uh, the NES is also the one I have the most accessories for. Cause, uh, and I will say, right off the bat, before we start on the collection, um, a lot of the games and the accessories I collected, they were inspired by watching AVGN, so... That that might come up like quite a bit during this step, during this video. I apologize if uh, you don't care for AVGN, but uh, um, a lot of the a lot of the games picked up in my collection were inspired or at least mentioned or featured in the show, and that's why I picked them up. But uh, you know, because I've that because that I've seen footage of the game, so I know what I'm look what I'm getting into and like what sort of game it is. 
So anyways, uh, we'll go ahead and just go through the collection now. This is a pretty big collection too. It's actually, it's a pretty decent uh, fraction of the library. Um, in North America, we got uh, 678 NES games, according to Wikipedia, that is. Um, and the cartridges were pretty big, actually. Like, pretty big. At least I thought, I especially thought back in the day they were pretty big when I first saw them in person. I was like, geez, these things are huge. But, because uh, I was used to the, the N64 and Super Nintendo cartridges, which were also pretty big. Um, but in actuality, the chip itself is only about half the size of the cartridge itself. But they're pretty indestructible. They can take quite a beating. Um, that's the one cool thing about cartridges versus discs, essentially. Um, but yeah, it's 678 games. Um, I have, uh, let's see, let's count the cartridges real quick. So if I counted correctly, there are 66 NES cartridges here. So 66 out of uh, 678. So that's a small fraction, about about a tenth of it. But uh, so not bad. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll get more eventually as I go on because you know most NES games are really easy to collect. They're pretty cheap. So I've seen a lot of them at uh, you know game stores recently. But the only reason I don't pick them up is because I never heard of them or. You know, but like if they're super cheap, I'm gonna start eventually just collecting them, like regardless of whether I heard of them or not, just to expand the collection essentially. But either way, it's a pretty respectable collection, at least for, for my standards, I suppose. Um, anyways, let's get started. First of all, we have Ten Yard Fight. This is one of the Black Box uh, launch or uh, 18 launch tiles released in North America on uh, October 18th, 1985, and uh, this one is a football game. Um, basically, when the NES first launched, they were trying to, they released these 18 games, and they had, they, they were basically trying to appeal to, like, uh, every type of gamer, essentially, like, they, they were trying to explore as many, uh, genres as possible, I guess. So, there's gonna be a sports games, action, action games, you name it. Okay, next up, we have the first, uh, game I picked up because it was reviewed by, reviewed by ABGN. Back to the Future on NES by, and it's one of the LJN licensed or published games, so yeah, not one of the better ones. It's definitely, it's definitely a pretty bad game. It sucks. It's one of those sucky licensed games that uh, you just don't care for. You don't, you play for like five minutes at best at a time. Next up we have Baseball, another one of the black box launch titles. You know, it's just, it's baseball, simple baseball. I wonder if I should have my dad try out a 10 yard fight since he's so much, so into football, you know, so much. Okay, next up we have actually one of the uh, decent licensed games on the NES library, Batman, based on the uh, t Tim Burton film from 1988 or 89, one of the two. So, yeah, it's a pretty good game for my plate so far. I've tried out, uh, I think I've tried out at least, or all these at least once, but uh, haven't really gone that far into it. Like, I'm not, just because I, I admire the system and love it a lot doesn't mean I'm really good at the game, so I just want to make that abundantly clear. Um, next up, Bugs Bunny's Birthday Blowout. Um, this is basically a Mario 3 ripoff. Like, there's a lot of uh, similarities to it, essentially. And you'll notice if you play if you actually play the game. Okay. Next up we have Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. I don't need... This needs no introduction whatsoever, especially if you're familiar with AVGN. But uh, if you're not, um, and... You might be wondering why I don't have the original Castlevania. That's because with it being the original Castlevania, one of the more popular titles, it's a little harder to get a hold of. Like, it's not going to be at a game store that often because people are going to want it immediately as soon as it arrives there. But uh, Castlevania Two Times Quest is not necessarily a bad game. It's just kind of average when you compare it to, the, to, the, to its predecessor. It's a lot like Zelda Two in a way, sort of. Next up we have... Deadly Towers. Hmm, not a good game. This game sucks. It's basically a labyrinth type of, type of game, but like, it's... I don't know, it's really hard to explain. I guess I'd have to actually make videos on it to prove it. Next up we have Dick Tracy. So, another one of those games. Maybe I'll just say those games, so that way I don't have to mention AVGN so much. Okay, next up we have Donkey Kong 3. This is one of the first uh, NES games that I had in my, in my original collection back in 2009. And this was the one that worked first. Okay, so I should probably mention the uh, poor design choices of the NES. It is designed basically like a VCR. You load the games inside, like so. 
and then you're supposed to push them down like so. When you push them down, that bends the connectors, and thus over time, they eventually stop working, and they stop bringing games altogether. So, what I do is I stick them in, but I don't push them down. And that's why I recommend doing if you have an original NES model. Do not do not push the games down, basically, is the key to keeping your, making your NES games last longer. Um, but as for Donkey Kong 3, I personally like it. Um, I know people are pretty... Uh, lukewarm to it compared to the uh, the first uh, Donkey Kong one and, uh, and Donkey Kong Jr. And um, well, you'll see in a second that I do have them, but uh, it's a, it was definitely a pretty good game to start with, honestly. But I will say, yeah, like I've seen before, it was one of the few NES games in my collection that actually worked without without you know much trouble, basically. Um, sometimes it'd be glitchy, but after I cleaned my NES games for the first time, which I did. And there's actually a video on here on YouTube of me cleaning my NES games and showing how to do it because there is a proper way to do it and that's, that's using a um, Windex and a, you know cotton swabs, basically. That's the easiest way to clean NES games. And that's the way I recommend doing it. Um, but yeah, I did that and it was the first game to work properly after I did that. Okay, next up we have... Donkey Kong Classics. So, uh, so this is a compilation cartridge of both the original Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Not the original arcade versions, but the NES versions, which are decent. You know, they're decent ways to play the games at home. That was a selling point of NES games. NES, when it first came out, was being able to play arcade games at home. Because uh, that was a selling point for a lot of consoles back in the day. Next up, we have the original Double Dragon. Basically a fighting game franchise of sorts. Okay, so that's the end of the first of four piles, but what, but I will say that the first pile is only about half the size of the other pile, so yeah, stay tuned. Okay, I guess I'm missing... Oh, oh my god, I missed... That explains it. I wasn't at the bottom of the pile yet. Now I am. Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. So there you go. So I thought I had all three then, and I do, because now we have the third one, Double Dragon 3. Does this have a... Yes, it does have a subtitle. The Sacred, Sacred Stones. Yeah, there's your little... Double Dragon Chil Trilogy. Trilogy? Seriously? Next up, we have another one of the uh, original titles I owned. Dr. Mario. A very decent puzzle game that started on the NES. Oh, I even have the instruction booklet for it, too. What do you know? Okay. Next up, we have... Duck Hunt. This is another one of the uh, original black box titles on the system. And uh, we'll get more into that once we get to the accessories, basically. Next up, we have another one of the launch titles, Excite Bike. So this one is part of the programmable series, what it's called. And the reason why is because you can, act you can actually design your own tracks on this game, which is actually which, which was pretty impressive for the time. But obviously, with it being the NES, you can't save your design. So it's not that impressive, but it was still pretty cool. You can make your own tracks, basically. But otherwise, it was basically a motorcycle, or, yeah, motocross game, basically, of sorts. Um, next up, we have Fester's Quest. Yeah, this is basically an Ab uh, Adam's Family game, of sorts. And it's not very good, unfortunately. Okay, next up, we have one of the classics, Final Fantasy. So, I don't think Final Fantasy needs any introduction, but, uh, yeah, it started on the NES... And nowadays, people are playing Final Fantasy XV on the PlayStation 4, and it's it's awesome. Okay, next up we have Gyromite. Another one of the launch tiles, but this one is very special. And we'll be getting into that towards the end of this video, once I get to the, one, get to the accessories again. Next up we have another black box launch title, Golf. Nothing more to say about it other than the fact that uh, the character... The, uh, yeah, the character in the game looks like, a lot like Mario, doesn't he? I can see it, definitely. Okay, next up we have another black box launch title, Hogan's Alley. It's another one of those uh, light gun series games. Next up we have... Ugh. Hide Lied. Don't play this game. It sucks. Just don't do it. Please do yourself a favor.
Okay, next up we have Ikari Warriors. So this is a co-op game, which is actually which 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 was pretty rare on the NES. Actually, it even says two can play together on the art, which looks kind of funny when it's, the way it says that. But uh, yeah. I think we're all familiar too with the code which you get where you can bring yourself back to life by pressing A B B A whenever you die, so there's that as well. Okay, next up we have Jaws. Published by LJN. This one it's it's kinda interesting though actually. I actually this is probably out of the LJN classic games that I own, this is probably the most fun one to play, and that's not but that's not saying much, just saying. But it's basically an RPG of sorts, actually. Next up we have Karate Champ. Definitely not one of the better games. It's not, I mean, it says number one arcade hit, but uh, as far as translation to the NES, it's not that good. Okay, next up we have The Karate Kid. It's it's not that bad as far as LJN games go, but it's, it's still nothing impressive. Um, it's just pretty... Bleh, average. Okay, next up we have another classic. Kid Icarus, or Kid Icarus, however you pronounce it. I, I'm just going to say Kid Icarus. Um, but yeah, this is where a classic, but unfortunately forgotten by Nintendo themselves, a franchise started. And it was made by the same developers as Metroid. Interesting enough. Oh. Well, the pile down there just toppled, but whatever. Okay, next up we have... Um, so this is a probably Yoshi fan 2012 favorite game on the NES, Kirby's Adventure. And this is one of the few NES games that can actually be saved. It's got, uh, you can tell, because it's got this uh, notice on the back of the cartridge that says, uh, you know, it's kind of gold, unlike the other ones, and it says, uh, this game pack contains batteries. Do not rapidly turn the power switch on and off. Do not load or remove while the power is on. So there's a, yeah, so basically there's a battery backup in the NES games that can save, and like I said, there's very few of them. Kirby's Adventure is one of them. And I believe uh, Final Fantasy is also one of them. I didn't check, though, so... But I'm pretty sure Final Fantasy you can actually save as well. Um, next up, we have a, another uh, Black Box... Uh, yeah, Black Box uh, launch title, Kung Fu. Very basic uh, karate game, essentially. Okay, we have another classic here. The Legend of Zelda, the original. Believe it or not, I have actually completed this game. This is one of the few NES games I've actually completed. And the few Zelda games, too, at that. Um, so, uh, be, uh, don't be surprised if you see a Let's Play from this game, or play, Let's Play of this game from me in the near future. Just saying. I mean, how can I not play it? It's gold. <gasps> but you know what else is gold? Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. So this is a bit of a black sheep of the Zelda series that I'm fully aware of, and I'm looking forward against this one. But if I'm to if I'm to complete the games the Zelda games in order, then I have to do this one next. But uh, who knows if I actually will? Well, I just don't know. If I, I don't know if I'm going to play it next, like right after the first Zelda. Basically, I played the first Zelda. I completed it for the first time back in a, a few years ago. So yeah, I don't know. I've had I've had so much fun with Breath of the Wild and Wind Waker, though that's for sure. Okay, next up we have another black box uh, title, Mock Rider. So this is another programmable game where you can uh, design the tracks once again. Um, but either, otherwise, the futuristic uh, game of sorts were look or more like a sci-fi sort of game. Like it takes place in the future, and you have to like rescue your homeland or something like that. It it's kind of complicated. Well, it's not complicated. I just don't I just don't remember the synopsis in my head that much. Okay, so that's the end of the second pile. Now for a third pile. Next up we have a classic, the arcade classic, Marble Madness. This game is not really that fun, but I can definitely see the appeal behind it, sort of, of sorts. It's not my kind of game, I guess, sort of. Okay, another classic here, Metal Gear. Pretty much every game in this, in this library is a classic in one way or another. But uh, yeah, everyone knows everyone. Everyone loves the Metal Gear series, but unfortunately, this was not made by the same people who made the first actual or like the actual Metal Gear games. Um, 
I think it was Hideo Kojima. I don't know if he was involved in the original Metal Gear games, but uh, he definitely wasn't involved in this one. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember who it actually was him or not. Okay. So we have yet another classic here. This is Metroid. The original Metroid. Um, haven't played it yet, but I have heard uh, things about uh, the original Metroid. Let's just say that's not... It hasn't aged very well. Okay, next up we have Pac-Man. This is one of the games that I owned in my original collection when I first got my NES, and it was uh, one of the one of the games I would play more because it was it had a bit bit more of an addicting allure to it, essentially. You know, since I I was actually familiar with Pac-Man, you know, who wasn't who wasn't at this point. Okay, another black box uh, launch title, Pinball. It's actually a pretty fun uh, iteration of Pinball, and there's actually some unique elements to it from the Mario series, so. You could technically call it a Mario game, I suppose. Okay, this one I picked up just because I recognized the name uh, of the uh, publisher, but also the name sounded kind of just kind of interesting. But otherwise, there's no other reason for me to get this uh, Pipe Dream by Bulletproof Software. There's that. Okay, next up we have. Uh, uh, why did I pick this one up again? I don't know, but hey, it's an NES game, so I had to get it. Platoon. Nothing more to say about because I have no idea. Okay, so we have another uh, black box title here. Pro Wrestling. Like I said, they were trying to appeal to everyone at the launch of the NES, essentially. Okay, next up we have Rad Racer. It's pretty rad, if I do say so myself. But it's one of the... Uh, it's not one of the black box titles. It's not, it's not a launch title, but it's definitely, it was definitely published by Nintendo themselves. I think it was one of the games that, that were in the Nintendo uh, uh, Nintendo World Championships cartridge or something. It was on there, too, along with Tetris. Next up we have The Simpsons, Bart vs. The Space Mutants. Yep, I got The Simpsons games, too. Well, a couple of them, at least. There it goes again. All right, next up we have The Simpsons Bart vs. the World. So this is actually a sequel to the Space Mutants one, so I don't know why he's uh, going against the world when he just rescued him, rescued the world from the mutants. But yeah. <laughs> next up we have Skate or Die. I'm going to choose the latter. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, we all have to at some point eventually. Okay, next up, another black box launch title, Soccer. Mind if I suck it to ya? That wasn't funny at all. Oh, another classic, Star Tropics. Good stuff. And it's one of the games where you can save, too. Yep. Kind of important, though. It is actually, it's an adventure game. It's kind of like Zelda, essentially. I think it was made by the same people, but I'm not entirely sure on that. And then we have the sequel, Star Tropics 2, Zoda's Revenge. But it's actually titled Zoda's Revenge, Star Tropics 2, so that makes it a little more confusing, and it's a bit more um, obscure, basically, because of that. In fact, actually, unfortunately, this was the last Star Tropics game, sadly. It never made it off of the NES. Okay, that was the last, the last pile there. Okay, next up we have Stealth ATF. Uh, this is another one of those games where I don't know what... Why well, I picked it up, but uh, it's just it was published by Activision, so maybe I just recognize the name. Beats me. Okay, next up we have Super C, the sequel to Contra. Once again, I don't have the original Contra, so come at me. Okay, next up we have Super Glove Ball. No comment on this one, not yet. Okay, I don't think anyone's ever heard of this game, but uh, if anyone has, please let me know if you if you know anything about it. I don't know anything about this game, so please let me know in the comments below. Ooh, Doki Doki Panic! This is a great game. I really, I highly recommend this one. And then we have what many people say to be the greatest game on the on the Nintendo Entertainment System. It is Super 
And it is Akari Warriors. No, <laughs> Super Mario Bros. 3. I don't think Yoshi Fan 2012 will agree, will agree on that. I'm, I'm pretty sure she still thinks that Kirby's Adventure is the best, but uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 is still a pretty great game. It's still a standout on the NES. For sure. Okay, so next up we have the compilation cartridge that everyone has if they, if they own NES. Or, okay, not everyone, but uh, a lot of people do. Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt. This was one of the, uh, this is how I owned Super Mario Bros. originally on my NES collection. I had, this is the, uh, I think the reason why this cartridge is so common is because it came packaged with the NES in, some, in one of the later sets or something like that. And then we have another one, which also came with, uh, what came with, uh, like the NES action set or something like that. Like, came with the, uh, the zapper and the, uh, power pad. It is Smart Bros, Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Meets. So, there's quite a few, uh, compilation cartridges in my collection. Next up we have Flea. No, it's, a uh, Super Spike Beeple. I, volleyball, I'm guessing. And then we have a compilation cartridge. Super Spike V-Ball and Nintendo World Cup. So another soccer game of sorts. With uh, up to four players, wow. Guess I'll have to get the NES satellite or four score, or whatever it's called. Okay, now we have another classic on the NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No more to say about that. Who hasn't heard TMNT? All right, black box uh, title here, Tennis. Tennis. Okay, next up we have another classic, Tetris. Not the good one, but, you know, the Nintendo one. But seriously, who doesn't love Tetris 2? The best version there is. Next up we have To the Earth. I haven't played this yet. I know nothing about it, but I'm willing to bet it's a shooter. A space shooter. Next up we have Top Gun. Top Gun. Believe it or not, there was actually a sequel, Top Gun The Second Mission. It's one of those uh, uh, shooter games of sorts, like first person too. Okay, next up we have Total Recall. Yeah. If you know the kind of movie that Total Recall is, then you'll know that it is a, that it is a perfect game, or a perfect movie, to make it to a kid's game. Thanks, Acclaim. Okay, next up we have Track and Field by Konami. So, uh, yeah, it's another one, one of those games that use the, uh, power, the NES Power Pad, I do believe. I do, I just believe, I could be wrong. Then we have the sequel, Track and Field 2. So I'm guessing they had different events on them, probably, because they probably couldn't fit all of them on the one cartridge. Next up, we have the best NES game of all time, Where's Waldo? Which can, be, can potentially be beat in just six minutes. Next up, we have World Class Track Me, which requires the power pad. But this one, uh, yeah, it's just a standalone cartridge, basically, because you saw the compilation I had there. Next up we have Xenophobe. So another basic arcade, or it says authentic arcade edition, split screen action, two player interactive. So other than that, I don't know anything else about it. <gasps> but I do know something about Yoshi. Yep, Yoshi had games on the NES, believe it or not. They were puzzle games. He also had, uh, or well, they also had Yoshi's Cookie. And that my friends, is the last of my NES collection. But wait, there's more, as Billy, and the words of Billy Mays. We still have the accessories to get through. I'm just gonna pull them out randomly, actually. Okay, so remember that game Super Glove Ball? Well, in order to play that game, and uh, actually, there's also, there was one other game that was made for this accessory, but uh, yeah, in order to play that game, you needed the Power Glove. You need to have the power. But seriously, this is probably the, I don't know, actually the second best uh, addition to my collection, my video game collection, actually. 
Because you would not believe how proud I am to have this this accessory. Because this is just one of the best things ever to have. I mean, yeah, functionally it's not that not not that great of a you know not that great of a system. But seriously, it's a controller that you can wear. Like how like how awesome is that? You know. See, yeah, believe it or not, folks, I do own a power glove. Um, I've actually tried playing with it a couple times. I had Ultra 64 Fan 1 give it a try, too. And, yeah, this thing is just as bad as people say it is. But it's still, like, you know, functionally. But otherwise, it's still pretty awesome. I mean, like, seriously, it's a controller that you wear. Like, how awesome is that? But I still gotta get more accessories here. I got this wire hanging off my arms. It's gonna make it a little more difficult to grab stuff. Okay, next up we have the NES Zapper, or Light Gun, as it's also known as. And basically what it is, is you'd use this for Duck Hunt, Hogan's Alley, and Wild Gummin, and a couple, and a few other games. And basically you point at the screen, and you would fire in at the direction of them, and the, the, the whole screen would go black, with the exception of the targets, which would be white. Or giving off, yeah, they'd be giving off light, and if the, and basically be determined, like, and then it would... The light gun would determine whether it's pointing at the light or not, and that's how it would know that you got your, your targets, basically. We didn't have a motion sensor bar back in those days, unlike the nowadays of when we have the motion sensor bar for the Wii. Or, yeah, we didn't have the motion sensor bar for the Wii back in the day. Okay, next up we have probably the proudest addition to my NES collection, as far as accessories go. And the whole reason why I'm actually kind of glad I got to Gyromite. This, my friends, is Rob the Robots. The robotic Operating Buddy. Unfortunately, I do not have any of the pieces that come with him to, to, to play Gyromite. I don't have Stack Up. But whenever I do get Stack Up, I intend to get it with the part, the pieces that come with it. But they're so freaking expensive. So it's going to be probably ages before I get the, the pieces to Rob. But mark my words, someday I will. I'm just excited to, over the fact that I have Rob. Like, that's so, that's so cool. You do not believe how hard it is to get Rob, let alone the pieces that come with him, too. Next up, we have the NES Advantage. Basically, an arcade-style joystick. That uh, is, basically makes you feel like you're, you're in the arcades when you're playing the shooter games and whatnot, and any of the other games that are poured from arcades, like a Donkey Kong and whatnot. And it even comes with the turbo functions, too, for games like Ghostbusters, where you... Where you, you know you're in that one scene where you know that one part where you're going up the stairs and you have to tap the A buttons, but you can instead just press the, hold the turbo button. I have a few other accessories too, like there's the NES Max, which is basically a regular NES controller but with the turbo buttons essentially. Uh, but the control the control stick is really weird on this. Like what the hell, man? Hard to show it up close, but yeah, it's like you move the move the red uh, thing around. It, it, it's just weird. I don't recommend it, honestly. That's about it, because otherwise all I have is just the regular NES controllers. I mean, like, I also have the NES Classic Edition, too. So here's the NES Classic Edition, preloaded with, thir with uh, 30 NES games for release in 2016. Of course, you could mod it to add other NES games into it, but it's a good way to play 30 of those classics with uh, in HDMI. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I am eventually planning on getting... Uh, uh, another NES that the so what so that way it's a little more appealing to look at. It doesn't have the yellowing, uh, the aging yellowing effect on it. And also at some point I'd like to get a, uh, a what you call it. Uh, at some point I'd also like to get the AVS. So the AVS is actually a uh, a modern version of the NES that plays NES games in HDMI essentially. It puts it outputs them in HDMI. So you still have to have the any the actual games, but you can play the output them in HDMI. So I might actually get go with that instead of getting a, another NES. But who knows? There's also the Top Loader mod, which lets which lets you play a European and Japanese games as well. So there's that too as another option. But uh, either way, folks, that hit that that's my NES collection. Um, join me tomorrow for the miscellaneous collections video where I show um, basically like the single. Um, the games where I the games I don't have consoles for, and also uh, systems where I don't have games for, or they're just with uh, built-in games and whatnot. Um, basically, tomorrow's the uh, ending of this whole video game collection series, and uh, after that, I can move on and talk about other stuff like the snow that's going on outside. But uh, 
more on that in a later vlog. For now, this is we've already gone for about 40 minutes here before editing, so uh, I'm going to end things off here. So, see you guys next time for next vlog, whenever it is. Thank you, goodbye.